All right. Sorry, they um, it asked me for a one-time ID number, which is never done before. So I had to go through the whole process of getting the ID number. I'll let everybody in here. No excuses, Alan. No yeah. excuses. I'm so proud of myself that I can actually schedule a webinar for a tree here and, and log into it after I schedule it. So apparently not. <clears throat> Hello, Rain. Hello, Adrian. <laughs> Looks like Julian's still trying to get in. Yeah, Julian, you can talk if you want, if you're on mute. I've also promoted you to, oh, there you go, okay. He's coming in. All right, so you started the recording, Ellen? We have started the recording of the meeting, yes. Okay. Uh, Bennett, are you gonna take notes? Yep. Great. All right, welcome everybody. Um, can someone watch for new participants? Or else someone else share the screen and I'll watch for new participants. Julian, can you do that? Share my screen. Yeah, well, do you have the um, agenda? Yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> While he's doing that, I'll take hours. So, Sarah. Three. Bennett? Uh, I'm going to combine. I missed the last meeting, so if, if it's okay, I'll combine. And I will say that that was um, combined seven hours. Okay. Adrian, you weren't here for those. Uh, Britt? Uh, I think I also missed the beginning of the last meeting. So I would say. Uh, five, four, four with the planting. Well, plus these two meetings are included. These two, okay. So then three for the planting, two for these, one for the last, so six. Okay. Site visit? The I'm site saying. visit on West Street, yeah. Yep. Six, okay. Ellen? Uh, three. Okay, Julian? Uh, I have nine. Nine. Um, did we give our talk since the last meeting? I can't remember. I believe we did. If not, then probably more like 15-ish. Yeah, and uh, I think so. Um, I probably have about the same 15. Okay. All right, good. Um, so did you get the agenda up to share? I am trying. The document is loading and it right. continues to come up. I share the screen. You keep an eye on the participants. Okay. 
that's and, better. Um, yeah. You have to click on participants, then click on attendees if there's anybody, and then promote them to panelists. Yep. Okay, good. So I'll share the screen. I can find. Oh, I can't do that. Hold on. Not so simple. <laughs> I've got it here though. Okay. Okay, so I can, everyone see that? Yes. Good. Mm. Just adjust this so I can see everybody better. Okay, uh, well, that's the wrong one. Okay, I'm sharing the wrong thing. One more try. Agenda. No, this is still the minutes. One more try again, okay. Um, okay. Last try. Hey, how's that? Okay. So no, well, Adrian, you're sort of public and part of the committee. Do you have any comments? You have to unmute. Uh, nothing at the moment. Okay. Feel free to speak up if you have something to say, of course. Thank you. Um, we just did the tree hearing and we approved the removal of the tree on uh, West Street. And uh, did any changes to the October minutes or can we just approve them? Thumbs up if you like the October minutes. Yeah, I, I put in the changes requested, but you should have, you know what they are, Henry. Are, are you the one who, are you the one who submits them to the town? Yeah. Okay. So do, do I have, where are the changes? You sent me the changes? Or is it on um, the drive? No, um, it was just one change I think Julian had. Yeah, I think I have that. Yep, that's okay. it. That was reflected in there, I believe. Okay, good. All right, so minutes are approved, yes? Yeah, shake your heads or something? Or, yeah, good. Yep. Okay, chair's report. Um, one thing I just want to remind Julian to bring the lawn signs for the planting Saturday. And Alan said we're going to plant on McClellan Drive. Are we going to start by um, North Pleasant Street? It's quiet. Alan, you're muted. I was thinking we could uh, just because all the the first couple of trees. Well, it won't make any difference. Yeah, let's start on North Pleasant because that's the easiest for people to find, and then we can just work our way down. If I need to turn the truck around to get to the other side of the street with the hose and stuff. I'll just do that. Um, we're going to end up planting two trees on Lincoln. Um, Great. The last two trees. So. OK. Um, yes, I guess so it was since the last meeting. Um, Julian and I and a woman from the Northampton Tree Committee spoke to the Western Mass, uh, Mass Tree Wardens and Foresters Association. And a um, small group, but they were very supportive. And a lot of people were interested in contacting their Congress people and, um, and you know, letting them know about the four issues, which were this chapter 87 update, the complete street law, the solar farm siting law, and the funding for trees, which is House Bill 905. And Mindy Dom is a big supporter of all of them. Um, I saw her. I was uh, helping out at the Mass Maple booth at the Big E, and she was there helping out. And so we had a nice talk about trees there. 
and then I gave a talk on just how complex <laughs> trees are for the Unitarian Church in Greenfield. And that went well. It was a small crowd, but it went well. Um, so that's that. Uh, Alan, 20 Strong Street, someone had written us about trees. Did you reach out to them? Uh, that's, um, yes, I met with them uh, two weeks ago. They're concerned about the big sugar maple trees that are dying and going to fall in the house at the moment. And we discussed uh, replanting once we take care of the trees that are um, declining. Okay. Um, there's also, um, yeah, I want to encourage everyone to reach out to Mindy Dom and Joe Cumberford about the statewide issues. Um, I'll send you, this is uh, what we passed out at the thing. It'll be backwards to you guys, I guess. Um, but I'll send, uh, I'll send this to everyone. And then if you contact Congress people, let other people in the state know to contact their Congress people. I think we need to get some push to get these to happen if they're gonna happen. Um, but it was nice to actually speak on them and have Julian speak and share what we're trying to work on. Um, the only other thing I have is that um, there'll be a um, tree warden of the year um, of the competition or they want us to nominate people. So we could nominate Alan. He's been the tree warden before and he doesn't want us to nominate him again. No, you can't actually, you can only get nominated once. So, but thank you. Okay. <laughs> That's too bad. I was seeing it on the website and was like, oh, perfect. There's a lot of really good tree wardens out there um, doing really good work that need to get recognized. So um, yeah, you know, if you know of one of them or you know, somebody who lives in another community who thinks their tree warden's good, um, let them know to nominate. Them. Good. All right, and that's um, all I have. Um, Julian, do you want to go next as the vice chair? Yeah, thank you, Henry. So I was also going to cover the uh, dinner that we had, um, but I appreciate you for covering that as well as the possibility of the tree warden of the year. And then the other things is, uh, thank you, Bennett, for getting our newsletter out. I saw that, um, that looked good. And uh, I was also able to log into the Google Drive and the Gmail and all the public shade tree accounts with the help of Shoshona. So I will now be checking those um, and responding as necessary on a regular basis, probably two or three times a day. Um, I, after getting a few questions, explain to my English class um, what is happening with the Mary Maple and where that is going. Uh, I got a few questions, Alan, about when or what might be a interim celebration um, this fall. Uh, but other than that, um, just explain what happened there. I attended a uh, Northampton Forestry Commission meeting um, and they would be interested in holding a joint meeting or a forum at some time together. Um, and I just told them that I'd be happy to reach out to them and talk with them about it uh, after talking with you guys. Um, but Rich said they would email us. Um, I also learned, interestingly, the city of Holyoke is giving, is pushing for a $30,000 line item for tree planting there. Um, so I'm learning more about that, seeing maybe we can tie our actions, see how that goes. I've also fielded a few uh, residents who have emailed or called me being upset that uh, Amherst College is taking so many trees down on their land. Um, and I just advised them of the same thing uh, as with a few other issues, which is a significant tree ordinance is really the only way to go here. Um, Hadley's Tree Committee is planting uh, uh, new trees in honor of four residents, which is pretty interesting and worth pointing out. And the other thing I noted is when holding signs uh, for an unrelated organization outside the Munson Library, a resident approached me and said, thank you for telling Alan to cut down that tree on the 
North Common or on the South Common there. So that was good to see all done and cleaned up as well. So that is my report. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Um, if the significant tree ordinance were to pass and be implemented, would it pertain to Amherst College or are they uh, like their own entity? I believe it pertains, it would pertain to any private property in the town, but that would be something to um, probably draft in the process. Alan could answer this better than I could. Well, I was, I, I will just add that the trees that they have been cutting down to live across the street from their recent, um, you know, chainsaw massacre and uh, not, I don't think, I, I'm not sure any of them would qualify technically as significant trees. Um, but when you're, when you start talking about like the last bunch, it was not, I counted nine trees um, of various various sizes and ages that they took down for drainage problem, you know, related to drainage issues and flooding issues, which makes absolutely no sense. I'm not sure that in this case, a significant tree ordinance, even if it were to apply to private land, including a, a campus, um, would actually be able to prevent them from um, taking down what might be deemed insignificant trees. So. Yeah, I can try to answer that question. I mean, I think it all depends on where or how the ordinance is written. Um, if we want to call an ordinance or is it is it a, you know, part of the planning kind of documents we have, zoning board of appeals or whatever um, that's out there. Um, you know, the private colleges are, you know, subject to the same rules and regulations in their designs as uh, the, you know, average landowner uh, in town is. Uh, UMass might have a different um, standing, but I'm not sure. I'd have to look into that. But uh, it all depends on how it's implemented, you know, what route we take, whether it's a standalone ordinance, bylaw, or whether it's part of the um, kind of um, project review that goes through the planning department. I would add on that, that I don't think all of these removals are related to specific projects. Um, so, you know, when they cut down this last bunch of them across the street from my house, we looked on their, their project website and ended up calling because there was no active project and it, it had nothing to do with a project. It had to do with, um, again, with, you know, supposedly with flooding issues and moisture issues in, in a house at, next to the trees. And so, I would say, you know, when we are drafting this, let's keep that in mind. It, it is not just project related. Um, so there should be a mechanism in place to, to take that into account. Good point. All right, Alan, your report. Um, I just wanna thank the uh, um, committee for participating, uh, Henry and Julian in the the Western Mass Tree Wardens Dinner Meeting. Um, we did get a lot of good feedback uh, from the surveys we put out. Um, and uh, I think people really did enjoy your presentation and, and gave a lot of those folks who aren't necessarily tree wardens, uh, but work in the tree care industry, an idea of what, what is going on behind the scenes that they don't see in probably their community back home possibly. So um, thank you for taking your time to come out and speak um, there. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, the uh, projects, they're starting to put together uh, projects for next spring and planning. And uh, it looks like there's a, a lot of, you know, as you saw in the paper, probably some grants town has received to do road and sidewalk improvements. So there's gonna be a new round of um, construction complete street, street sort of concepts coming down. Um, they're all going to have significant tree impact um, when they're done and uh, we'll work to minimize that impact, but uh, we're going to have a busy spring probably of uh, tree hearings to, to make all those things happen. So, um, 
Let's see what else. I don't you know, think I really have any other projects for this winter um, coming up. So as far as tree removal goes, we're just in a maintenance phase, trying to take down the wrist trees and prune them, and um, you know, trying to get the last few trees in um, with your help uh, next Saturday. Looks like it's going to rain. <laughs> so I don't know if you want to look at that or do you just want to work in the rain? Uh, cold rain? <laughs> <laughs> we want to work in the rain, but we don't want to, you know, all die of pneumonia. So um, I just remember one time that we canceled a, a tree planting and Northampton went ahead and did a tree planting on that day. And uh, yeah. We can't let that happen again. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we do an abbreviated tree planting or something. We would, you know, just try to not maybe do all of them at once or just get some of them in and just see how it goes. I mean, it's supposed to be raining, you know, or obviously earlier in the morning and then lessening as the day goes on and probably by around noon, not raining at all. So we'll see. Well, it's too early to really tell. Um, yeah, but... exactly. Um, that's it for the tree ward report. Henry, I did get your tree city USA um, first for stab at that uh, document. So I didn't get a chance to review it yet, but um, we will do that soon as I start the application process. So um, for the tree city USA program, every year I submit a summary of what the committee's done for the year. Um, I could maybe take the time now and read my list, if that would work for you, if I can find it. I'll, I'll share that instead of the agenda. Um, one thing about Saturday, this Saturday, I'm flying to Argentina, so I'm le I'll be with you from 9 to 10, but then I have to go. So, um, yeah. Uh, let me stop share and reshare. There it is. I don't want it there, though. How do I do this? Hold on one second. I get... Okay. All right. Share screen. Okay. Can everyone see that? Yes. yes. Um, so Alan usually fills in the number of trees we've planted. I'll add up all the hours that we've been collecting for the year and I'll put that in. And um, yeah, so the same list from last year, but then I updated it and changed a few things. So one question is number six. Did we actually write any articles and letters to the editor in 2022? Yes, Can we you did. Can you send me a copy of that? <clears throat> sure. And did anybody else write any letters or articles? No? <laughs> there were lots of articles about some of our meetings, but I don't know if that counts. Yeah. There were, there were a handful at least. How would I put that in this? Uh, contributed to public dialogue on uh like it the public trees through active media coverage or something or active media engagement good anything else i can add they like photos yeah um I'm trying to get photos. I might have sent you a few, but I'm trying to get more from uh, Shoshana. And if anyone else has photos of any of our tree plantings, that'd be great. Send them to me. I'll send them along with Alan with this. Okay. So I will stop this year and go back to the agenda. <coughs> Okay. 
Um, okay, so town tree inventory. I guess town tree inventory is up next. Any news? No news. I've been talking with IT department um, about um, giving me a spreadsheet of everything that we inventoried this summer. Um, and they haven't gotten that to me yet. Um, so. And no word about getting us trained to help with it? No, no, I'm gonna, I need to assess um, how much money I've already spent um, with the intern I had this summer and then figure out how we're going to, you know, go forward, how much time I need to spend with volunteers and how much time I need to spend with um, sort of the paid, paid person doing either training or, or inventory work themselves. So it's a 50-50 match, reimbursable match. So. <laughs> okay, social media update. Uh, Shoshana is not here, but Julian? Yeah, so we have about 87, uh, 88 followers now. Um, I have posted on the story, but not the regular page for the meetings. And for the plantings, I normally post uh, on the story the day before and then on the uh, thing the day after. Sometimes I think I missed that last time, but most times I do that. Um, and then uh, I also am logged into the Gmail and the Google Drive and Docs and all that type of stuff. So I can manage any social media presence there as well. I would, you know, I would just say, oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. You go. I was just going to suggest, you know, I don't know how often the committee has a presence, like at the farmer's market, for example, I know at, on Arbor Day last year or this year, um, everyone was there, um, but, but perhaps having some type of prompt next time we have a public presence um, of, of trying to get people to engage with the social media, like, you know, what's your favorite tree or something like that. And, and they join, but then also share. So just maybe thinking creatively around that um, in advance of our next public engagement opportunity. I think that's a great idea. We normally do those about once a year on Arbor Day. Um, and uh, for next year, I'll make something like that, we could do a QR code maybe. Yeah. And can you try to meet with Shoshana? And like this time I posted on Facebook that the meeting was happening, and the tree hearing, but I want you guys to be doing that. And she's kind of busy. So if you just check with her, maybe you take over that for a while. Yeah, I posted on Instagram. I could take it over and do it on Facebook too, but she'd have to give me the login information. So I'll call her tonight. And if not, possibly see her at the library. Great, thank you. Okay, uh, town tree tour, Ellen. No update. Will you have time anytime? I mean, I'm gone this month, but next month maybe we can try to yep. move forward. Okay. Yep. Let's really try to plan that for December. A lot of things that we want to do and we're not doing, and I want to figure out how to get those going. So. Okay. Good. Uh, second Saturday plantings were set for Saturday, unless it rains. Uh, next year, we should be thinking about locations and what we want to do, both for tree work days and for planting days. Does anybody have anything to say about that? No? Okay. The History Museum, Emmer's History Museum, anything new there? No new, uh, no movement on that grant yet. Okay. What What is the old on that that you're asking to update on the new? I'm sorry. What What is, I, I don't know anything about this. So the Amherst History okay. Museum has something to do with, wants something to do with trees or? Yes. Um, okay. So uh, the, Amherst History Museum reached out to me over a year ago um, to help with kind of caring for their very large sycamore um, that's in Got front it. of the museum. And okay. um, we ended up deciding to do a 
grant, a heritage tree grant through DCR. Um, we did get the grant and uh, now I need to do a lot of stuff to make the grant happen. So. Got it, thank you. Yeah. And we talked about us doing work with them, doing some publicity work around that tree and maybe planting the new tree and doing some of the mulching and stuff like that too. Yeah. Got it. I guess that started before your time. Yeah, I just I didn't I didn't know what it was referring to, so I appreciate that um, background. Uh, anything new on the North Common and Mary Maple? The town manager did agree to have it removed. Mm -hmm. So we're in the process now of uh, we've we've uh, selected a contract to do the removal, and the removal is probably going to happen um, in the next week or so. Um, so. So when they sent out last week the flyer for the holiday festivities that includes an event referring by name to the lighting of the Mary Maple. They're referring to the backup, the original Mary Maple then. Correct. Yeah. The smaller, okay. the smaller Mary Maple, the mini, okay. mini Mary Maple. So that they're like hoping nobody's going to notice it's just <laughs> yeah. back to a different tree. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. What's missing here? Yeah. <laughs> we could call it the happy maple, you know. <laughs> yeah, I I was I was just confused when I saw that flyer and it said the tree was going to be lit. I thought this doesn't connect with what we've been told about the removal yeah. timeline. So yeah, they had the um the bid pays for a contractor to light the tree each year. Right. Um, so they were out there lighting the smaller tree um, last week. Okay, got it. And do we want? I mean, if it's happening next week, I know we had talked about trying like various things around that. I mean, what um, we're proposing to do is um, save uh, a lot of the tree. Um, we're gonna probably chip the brush, but we're gonna take the tree and put it in a temporary storage area outside where we can then give people um, who want to. Uh, you know, use who have requested already to utilize some of the wood to make, uh, you know, furniture or uh, bowls or art, um, mm -hmm. or who just want a part of the tree. Um, so we'll be able to kind of control, um, control the uh, dissemination of the tree <laughs> to people who want it. So. Yeah, I have a question. Um, will there be a public announcement about the timing of taking the tree down so that those uh, people who might want to witness that public event could be there? I can ask if they're going to do that. I don't, um, I control the actual um, scheduling of it, um, not the publicity of it. So I can ask. Who, who else should... Um, I talked to about the publicity in the town manager's office. Yeah, that would be the town manager's office. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can also take on the publicity and also the publicity about that the wood is available. Mm -hmm. So if you can um, pass the date as soon as you know it, Alan, I'll probably pass it to Julian because I'll be away. Mm -hmm. And then you can post on social media and maybe Bennett can write something, uh, an extra newsletter or something about it. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it would be a mistake not to let people know in advance. Um, you know, and I think I think a lot of people are not fully aware that it's happening um, or when it's happening, of course. So I think maybe trying to publicize that, you know, beforehand um, wouldn't be a bad idea. And then actually somebody, a, a former student of mine actually who lives in Brattleboro sent me um, an article from the Brattleboro paper about a silver maple um, that had historic significance in the town that had to be taken down this fall. And they wrote an obituary for the tree and then held um, a celebration of life uh, before it was taken down. Um, and I thought that was a nice, a nice idea. So I don't know if there's a way to put something like that together, I'd be happy to to do that um, or take a leading role in that. But 
That was in Brattleboro? It was in Brattleboro. I, ha I, I can share the article. Um, um, it was in the Brattleboro Reformer in October of this year, um, Silver Maple Obituary uh, with a celebration of life, so. Please do share that and maybe Bennett, that could go in the, the newsletter piece about that. Yeah, I'll share it. Great. Alan, um, just a question about the maple. I'm, I am, um, I am, all, I am a little surprised it's coming down so quickly, and I shouldn't be. Um, <laughs> is there a? Um, I'm halfway thinking about my ten-year-old daughter. Like, how do I explain it to her? But it's a good way to explain it. I think if I could explain it to her, I could explain it to anybody. There, um, we need in terms of timing. This is something that needs to happen. Um, but, you know, it needs to happen before winter. It needs to happen before snowfall. I mean, is there, is it just like we've been, we, for safety reasons, we want to get it done? Like, what is the, um, you know, like what, what kind of, or is it just like the timing of the, the, the company that takes trees down? Like, what's, what are the, some of the circumstances of, about timing? Yeah. Again, I, um, you know, I, the safety issue is, a, you know, small concern, um, but it's, I don't think it's not my driving factor. Um, you know, the, the agenda and timelines for this is not being set by me and it's being set by um, the project on the common and um, I see. the okay. views of the views of other, um, of the town manager um, and folks who want to see the project move forward, so. Right. I, uh, that was that's a big thing that I forgot to mention in my long list of possibilities. Because um, yeah, I mean, obviously I voted to to remove the tree. So, um, but I've I've been thinking it would be nice to have like a final Mary Maple lighting, <laughs> but um, but probably not at the expense of that project. So, thank you. Thanks. Any, anything else about the Mary Maple or the North Common? Okay, town budget line item. Can I, I have one other thing to say about, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I wanna go back to the main yeah. <laughs> um, I also think that in terms of publicity, it would make sense for once we have, and I can do this, once we have the date, um, I mean, I think that like, I, I think we should probably reach out to Scott at the Gazette. Like I'm not just to, I want to avoid that moment where I drive by and I'm like, holy crap, the tree is gone. I want to at least prepare for it. And I, I think other people want to do that as well. Um, and the best, like we can sit out in the newsletter and we certainly will um, as a special thing, but you know, the newsletter's got 200 subscribers. I think probably the most effective way to get at the people who care about it. I mean, in our social media channels too, but probably as a Gazette article. Mm -hmm. it, it does and not as a big, you know, like we don't decide how that gets handled, but it's probably a small thing that says it's happening. Um, I just feel like, so, so as soon as we have that with your permission, I'll reach out to Scott at the Gazette and try to, yeah. um, have that if everyone agrees. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And I, I agree, Bennett. And I think having even, you know, for us to select a time and say, you know, if people want to come and gather, and this is kind of what it sounds like is happening yeah. in Brattleboro, you know, gather below its branches one last time or, have have you know uh, even a table you know some papers set up at the picnic table where where kids can do a drawing or or something like that um, you know before it's before it's taken down I think that would be I think that would be nice you know I'm also thinking about my kids who are going to be crying when they see this so um, I think that would be nice. Okay, thanks for lingering on that for, for us. Sure. Anything else on Mary Maple and North Common? Okay, town budget line item. <clears throat> Thank you, Julian, for the information about Holyoke. Um, yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> I know we talked with here, we have one attendee. 
me promote them to panelist? Can I promote them to panelist? We have one attendee, Rana Al Jamal. Oh. Then. So what, what are our next steps on this? Yeah, so the town budget line item, thank you. Um, we have the Holyoke had a $30,000 line item I, that they're advocating for. I'm not sure, I don't think they've gotten it yet. Um, I know uh, Athol was speaking about their budget at the Tree Wardens Conference. I spoke with a few folks who described their experience with advocating for a larger tree budget. Um, and then, uh, the other thing is I had a, a former town counselor reach out to me suggesting the possibility. I know this isn't the route we're sort of taking it, um, is the possibility of having a resident capital request. I know resident capital requests are currently open and it might be possible to go that route. Maybe not. What do you think? I don't know what one of those is. So a resident capital request is a request that any resident can make to uh, be submitted to the capital budget. It doesn't mean it would happen, but it means the town council and the department heads would look it over. That would be a one-time thing. I mean, it's not a bad idea. We could probably do that, but I'd really like to see it as a, line item budget so every year we get funding i i would tend to agree henry um but i just thought it was a idea they mentioned to me and figured it might be worth bringing it up we could submit it year after year each year but then it would be subject to scrutiny each year so well let's do it for this year and you know okay could i submit that is the committee okay with that yeah, it might be good if you send something to us and we just review it and then you send it in. Okay, sounds good. I'll if the seven up, of us all yeah, do I, it as one. That might be a little better. Should we meet on it or should I just type it up and send it to you guys? Yeah, start with that unless someone wants to meet with you. Sounds you know, good. Should we? Um, thank you, Julian. Um, yeah. Should we also... Have we had any, we haven't had a formal conversation with any counselors about this, right? I'm wondering if we should, you know, for example, you know, uh, Dorothy Pam was at our, um, at the the visit for the Mary Maple and was talking about, you know, how, and has been actually pretty active on a number of tree projects this year um, and has said, you know, has, I don't remember exactly what she said, but something about the importance of trees and the importance of budget for trees. And I just wonder, like, is it appropriate for us to invite a, a counselor to this meeting just yes. to, to talk about, like, I mean, that that's who, that's the person I would start with for, only for those reasons. Um, just to kind of, because, yeah, you know, what we've done has been pretty hands off. We've written a letter to the editor, you know, and I'm sure they read that, but that's not a full court press. Um, so maybe, um, so anyway, that's my idea. And let's invite Dorothy Pam to our next meeting are the next meeting she can join and um, and talk about this as a possibility. It, it's something we really, are, to indicate that we are not just being passive about this, we're active and serious about it and we'll do whatever we need to do. Yeah, these are public meetings and I think inviting, you know, people on the town council, inviting um, Paul Bachman, inviting Guilford Mooring, whoever, all, it's all good. So I would love for, yeah, if you want to reach out to Dorothy Pam, people know okay. other town councils, it'd be good to reach out to them. Yeah. So for any meeting, really, next meeting, as soon as, as soon as, sooner or better. Okay. better. I, I'll, uh, I'll reach out to Dorothy. Great, thank you. Anything else? Um, I have the treasurer report. Oh, I missed that. Sorry. That's okay. Um, 
the balance is $16,094.79. And that reflects three deductions, um, two sizable ones to Sugarloaf Gardens and Amherst Nursery and one for payroll. Can you read, just for the notes, can you read me that 16,000 what? 16,094 and 79 okay. cents. Thank you. What was the other one? You said payroll? Yep. There was a $363 payroll expense. Huh. There were no more details than that. Yeah, I think that's a mistake. I'm gonna have to check on that. There shouldn't be any payroll coming out of that. That's odd. Yeah. Okay. Well, there. So, Alan, there was another one in July that was also about three hundred dollars that was also listed as a payroll expense. So, if there's something that's been coming out incorrectly, it might have been going on for a while. So, if you're checking into it, um, you okay. should. So that was July, there. July and October. Were the dates? That's what I'm seeing. Yes. Okay. But no, I. Like I don't have like a printout, right? So everything I'm getting is like second hand over the phone. So if you if you're actually able to see the account balances, um, there there may be others. I just have two that I've noted so far. Okay, I'll go back and check. We used to have like twenty six, twenty seven thousand dollars in it, and I know we agreed to fund some of the new plantings, but that seems awful low. So. In 2021, we had about $23,000. Then I, I have notes from January through April. Then I handed it over. I don't have those notes in my little spreadsheet here. I have some of those, and we consistently hovered between 23 and 24,000. But Henry is right. Um, it did go up once to 26,000 at one point. So where, where did ten thousand dollars go? We agreed to yeah. fund like That's two or three thousand for a couple of plantings, maybe. So in so last month, October, we were eighteen thousand nine hundred fifty, and this month we're down to sixteen thousand. Yeah. Hmm. October is probably also reflective of September, which I didn't get for that month. Um, is it possible to, and I could do that either, um, I could do this too, to go to the clerk's office and ask for a record of like the past two years? I can go, so the only, only people that should be drawing on that is is me, I should be the one requesting um, money be withdrawn from that, um, which is what we agreed to do for the plantings. And anytime the committee ag agrees to spend money, you know about it. Um, so the only time I draw money on it is for the trees for planting. Um, so I can go back and pull all of the, you know, account information that's been charged to that and I should be able to get a list of everything that's been charged to that um, tree fund account. Um, yeah. I mean, the, num the numbers make sense. If 12 trees went in on the last planting and some of them were had price tags of you know $300, I know there's some discount, right? That's, that's over $3,000 right there. So for one planting. I thought we had a maximum of 3,000, um, something like that for each planting so and i don't think we've done every month like that does anyone remember what the uh, amount was no i don't remember exactly i also think that it was either two thousand or three thousand yeah. um the notes that i have go back to late july so i don't have a balance but um, in July, there was some money coming out and a donation, and then a little over 2000 taken in August for a planting September, 
it looks like the deductions were closer to 700. Not seeing a big ticket tree planting for September, but it might have just not fallen in the day when I called. Um, I think September was a workday month instead of a planting month, right? We had a few work, I think we had three work day instead of planting months. Right. So there should be three months without any expenditures, I would assume. We took August off too. Yeah. So. Um, then, yeah, so that, I mean, the latest number I have is from October and then I have November and those numbers seem to be lining up with the expenses coming out, but I just don't know how we got to 8,000, nine or 18,000. 950 um, for October from when I had picked it up, you know, from 2021. So um, there might have been some bills that hadn't been paid or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, and then they paid them all at once, but it's still, it doesn't seem, I'll get an account, accounting of, you know, every expense that's been charged to that account. Um, Great. Right. Thanks, Alan. And if you, um, I don't know if you're able to share that, but if you wanted to send it to me, I could just put together a spreadsheet for the committee to have as a treasurer spreadsheet that I could share or pass on to the next treasurers to have for records. Okay. That's great. great. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Anything more on this? Treasurer's report, no? That's the most lively treasurer's report discussion we've had since I've been on the committee. <laughs> Congratulations, everyone. Well, you take our money away, we're gonna get lively, yeah. <laughs> no, that that's everything. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, old ongoing items, connections with Stockbridge School. We were gonna yeah, so I have emails out as of recently. Um, to Dan Cooley, who is the Associate Director of Stockbridge and um, a plant pathologist, just, you know, for, for extra information. And to um, Christina uh, Bezanson, yeah. Bezanson, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, um, who runs the um, Urban Forestry and Tree Program, um, which is not part of Stockbridge, but part of the Department of Environmental Conservation. So I just, you know, I, I kind of know both of them in passing very informally and said, you know, I'm on the tree committee. Are there any mutually beneficial opportunities for us to, you know, put our heads together or work together on anything? Um, so I will report back when I hear back from them. Great. And feel free to invite any of them to our meetings. Yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah. I think Christine has come to one of our meetings before. Mm -hmm. To know. All right. Anything new on Northampton Road? No updates. And Shoshana's not here, so we don't know if photos are still happening. Uh, library trees. Sarah? No update. And I haven't heard of anything happening with that either. So. Uh, website update, Bennett? No update. I haven't touched it or thought about it in months. Um, this winter is, I feel like this is a, feel like Groundhog Day. <laughs> this winter will probably be the time I get to it. I hope that it is. Okay. Uh, complete streets statewide initiatives we've talked about. I will send this uh, statewide issue piece that I wrote up um, to everyone and hopefully you'll contact more people to get that word out. Significant tree ordinance, anything new there? Except the need is getting stronger. <laughs> um, Britt reached out and I sent her an email with kind of a summary of where we are now um, and we can get in touch for moving forward, um, but we're kind of at the um, stage of getting good precedence um, to make sure that we have a, you know, a good case for what we're proposing and to make sure that we're kind of in line with what other communities have been doing kind of uh, and just seeing for ourselves what what other communities have done and what other things we could borrow that might be appropriate for Amherst um, so that we have a good 
robust working document. Um, so um, Britt, we can get in touch sometime. Um, my schedule is hectic, but very flexible. So um, I'm sure we can figure something out and then we can move forward from there. Sounds good. And last is the solar bylaw group. Anything new, Julian? Nope. Nope. All right. Any other comments? I think this is a good meeting. It's, we're moving ahead with some things. Um, I will. I will. For the committee comments, I would just like to put out a, a plea for every time somebody sees a an interesting tree article, think. I should send that to Bennett for the newsletter because it always, the one I put in there this month was pretty cool, I thought, but that was a last minute fun. So um, that's there's always an fun. article today in the cover of the New York Times science section about it's about the trees, all their roots creating the world wood web. Wait, <laughs> I'm forgetting it at the moment. Did, but, you, about, did okay. you almost say the world wood web? Yeah, hope. that's what they're calling it. The wood, wood world wide web. web is what they call yeah, it. Yeah, the wood world wood web. Is, yeah. <laughs> but it's in the New York Times today. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Thank you. It's about all how trees are talking to each other. Are they talking to each other through their roots? It's like the debate over the mycorrhizal communication and resource sharing. I did not read the article yet. He sent know. it to me. I didn't read it either, but it, it I need to read it. But but that's how it was posed to me is it's like the the scientific debate over whether or not the trees are actually communicating and sharing resources mm -hmm. through their mycorrhizal connections um, you know, with their roots. So I thought you were talking about someone named Michael Reisel, and I was like, I Mike, missed Michael Reisel, like with like <laughs> fungal, certain types yeah, of fungal. No, I get it. Yeah. Yes, but I didn't get it at first. Thank you. All right. Uh, anything else? I don't have any other topics that I haven't put in. Um, not reasonable. I, yeah, I, I have one. Um, so this occurred to me the other day. Sorry, there's a lot of chaos happening in the background. Um, I teach a class in the spring, which is an environmental education class. It's mixed undergrads and grad students. And in the past, I have tried to have um, projects wherein the students are engaged in the community in some way. And it occurred to me that there could be um, an opportunity for us to do something around trees and raising public awareness or some type of collaboration with the town around like the value of trees in our community. So um, I would just put that out there if people think that would be interesting or there would be ways for a group of 25 or 30 UMass grads and undergrads um, to contribute to something around trees in our community. Um, I would very, be very open to um, thinking about making that a central point for the class. That's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. All right, anything else? All right. Well, thank you all. Um, you know, we're moving ahead. We just got to, we're all, we all have very busy lives and it's hard to keep things going, but I appreciate us getting together and really trying to get stuff happening. So thank you. And I just emailed the uh, capital request form to folks. Great. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you all Saturday morning, unless, uh, if the weather's so bad, we cancel, but let's plan that we're going to do it. Sounds good. Cool. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Bye.